Welcome to What the World Needs is Jesus broadcast. Got an announcement for you today coming from us here at What the World Needs is Jesus. We'll be at Wills Creek Assisted Living every Wednesday evening at 1.30 p.m. The address there is 1050 Airport Road West, Fort Payne, Alabama, 35968. We'll be singing and someone will be bringing the word. We'd like to invite anyone who would like to help to come help. You may come to be a blessing. I assure you, you will leave with a blessing. We ask if you would, please say a prayer for the residents there at the assisted living. If you need more information, you can contact Brother Ricky Phillips at 256-630-1262. Now, today's message comes from Brother Harold O'Neill. The title of his message is, Have You Received Since You Believed? He will be preaching out of Mark chapter 4, verse 14. Then we're going to have a song from Sister Rita Clardy singing, God on the Mountain. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Click the bell, turn on your notification on YouTube. Follow, like, and share us on Facebook. And check us out on Instagram for some inspirational posts. Now let this video be a blessing. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank you for uh, taking time to look at the, the broadcast here. And uh, we appreciate it. And uh, we want to say to you that uh, continue to listen to this network because what the world needs is Jesus. You know, uh, just recently there's a problem happened over in the uh, Middle East, Israel and uh, the Palestinians. They're looking to the United States to help them. They're looking for other countries to help them, but I know who can help them. You know who it is? It's Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. He's going to be the solution to all that over there. They can uh, put it off, put it off, avoid it, not not receive him. But when he comes back, fighting's over with. And as far as them now, we know there's things going to happen, but when he comes back and says, it's over with, it's over with. Amen. Amen. Today, we just want you to, to think about this, that uh, you're not going to live here on this earth forever. Uh, every day, we hear obituary reports. We read the paper, and we hear from by word of mouth of people that we've known that have uh, passed on. And uh, do we take it seriously enough? Christian, do we? I know we say, oh, I'm going to live forever, and truly, truly. But do we take the issue of life and time? See, life and death, what it means to us now is time here and time to make some decisions that will affect what happens then. See, that's what is so important about that. So as I was coming up here today, what is so needful in the Christian's life? For us to continue to be strong, to be able to fight the battles, uh, and have knowledge of what to do. What is important? I got have you paid close attention? If not, go to look at what's going on around the country. The farmers are planting seed. Why? Because they want to harvest. What will the seed do? It will produce. And do you realize in this world, any of the food we eat, now a lot of people say, well, it don't matter about animals, but yeah, it does. There, there's a reproduction cycle right there. It pertains to a seed. Any food that you would eat in this world, any to nourish your body would have to come from a seed. It really does. It does. So what does that make the seed vitally important? in this life of oh, foreign countries that have weather that's bad and land that's been affected by it what uh what is their biggest problem it's the lack of preparation ability of the ground to receive the seed and produce that's why they're having starvation over there and in our life, 
the Word of God, we know. Let me read this to you. It's in the book of Mark. It's in the 14th, uh, uh, it's in the 4th chapter, 14th verse, and it said, The sower soweth the Word. Jesus came and told people. And then he illustrated, and he did, illustrated the love of God to people. And then when it come time, he showed people just how much that God and that he loved us and what his will for us was. He gave his life to pay for our sins. Before he did that, he, he called other men, and even after, as he appeared to them, he called other men to go and sow the seed. What am I doing right here today? The other brother that was on, and the other brothers that will come on, and any brother that, uh, anyone you see preaching the word, or a singer that's singing, or a Christian that talks to you, we're sowing the word. Because believe me, you didn't get saved before you heard. You heard about Jesus before you ever got saved. And you might not have got saved immediately after you heard it. But believe me, down through time and keep a hearing. Christian today, it is so important for us to continue. See, these farmers have to uh, grow seed every year. Every year. Since we like to have food and, and we, we say, well, I had a breakfast this morning before I come over here, but guess what? And it, and it gives my body strength, and I can live from it. But guess what? I'm going to have to do it again this evening when I get home. Why? To sustain life. The seed will bring you life to you, but to sustain that life. And you got saved. Uh, it brought new life into your life. Into you. Well, into your life. It brought new life to your life. Yeah. But in order to sustain it, you continue to need uh, the seed, basic, because uh, the food I ate this morning uh, would grow from seed, bottom line. And the food I ate this evening will have to come from a seed. And tonight and tomorrow. Oh, yeah, there was a seed. It didn't just all of a sudden look out there on the ground, and there it was. When they started planting it, it come from a seed. So Jesus was telling them, explaining to them now even this right here too let me say this right here something about the farmers they'll sow the seed though right down the road before i got here this morning i noticed and here about a month ago come through there and there was a gentleman down there with a tractor and he was preparing the ground so that he could sow the seed And I know from the end of there, he had to put some kind of fertilizer on it, which would, again, be prepare the ground. Had to be prepared. Well, the, you know what the prepare is for us? First of all, us preaching the gospel, and then the Spirit of God come and draw and prepare the ground, prepare you for it. Without the Holy Ghost coming and convicting you, the ground's not ready for it. That's why so many people hear it, and they'll turn. Listen to this right here. Here's what happens, and everybody, to be honest, sees this happen in church, but maybe you haven't took enough time to read it and say, Lord, I, I want to see that clear. That the sower soweth the seed, which was the Lord to start with, Jesus Christ, and then the men that he called and told to do it, and it has come right on down, you know, where I got my call from, Jesus told other men to tell other men to tell other men to tell other men to tell me. And that's why I'm telling you so that you can too. And that's why if you do get saved and you're not now, that's why you'll tell other people so that they can receive. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. And if you look around, you'll see the farmer. They're in the field right now. They, they're, they're preparing the ground, they fertilize it, and, and we're going to call that the Spirit of God, fertilizing your life, getting ready for something to happen. And then they're going to plant the seed. 
That is why when a person hears the word, well, let me read it here. The sower soweth the word, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their heart. There is a devil. And he don't want you to hear that word. Actually, he can't stop you from hearing, but he can stop you from receiving by deceiving. He can stop you if you, if you allow him. If you allow him our salvation right now, this is going to be strong, but I believe I'm right, does not depend upon God, what he does toward us. He had already had. He's committed. And what Jesus said, well, Jesus wants me saved, I'll be saved. Jesus gave his life showing you that he wants you saved. That's why he did it. That's why he did it. And he made sure that you heard the word. Why? He wants you to be saved. The Spirit come to you. Why? Because he wants you to be saved. But see, there is a devil that will come and persuade. It's, it's not up to God whether we go to heaven or not. It's up to us. God has already done opened the door, made the way. That's like a, a new road. People build a road. You don't have to travel if you don't want to. Uh, but if you want to go to the end of the road where it leads to, you will. You will. If you want to go to Atlanta, Georgia, you'll have to get on a road that'll take you there. Yeah, You get on a road that takes you to Chattanooga, and you'll never get to Atlanta. <laughs> if you want to go to heaven, thank God, you're going to have to get on the road. Oh, Hallelujah. Brother, Woo, glory. <laughs> you're going to have to. It ain't no, or you can take it or leave it even though you can. If you want to go to heaven, you're going to have to get on the road. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. And you better get you some fuel in your automobile or it won't get you there. Right. And what is the fuel? It's the Holy Ghost. Yeah. The Word of God. Amen. Yeah. So yeah. when you see these farmers out there, don't don't get a bad attitude about them. They just, they, they grow and stuff. Some of them are planting for garden, for food to eat. Some of them are planting for cotton. So that we can have clothes to wear. That's exactly what they're doing. And some of them are for other purposes, for like to feed the animals, you know, that draw a wheat and such things, or for bread. Everything comes from a seed and it has to be planted. They say, well, in the, micro, uh, in the uh, labs now, they can create this and that, not from nothing. They got to have seed. Even doing all that cloning stuff got to come from a seed. Oh, yeah, it does. And these are they. By the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, have heard, I believe, I know there's not any nation on the face of the earth that hadn't heard about Jesus. I know there's not any nation. Now, every individual in them nations are they certain people in certain places that have not absolutely heard about Jesus Christ? Now, the Jewish people and, and over in that area worked with an Jordanian woman one time over here in America. She said if Jesus had been who he said he was, he stayed on the cross. But he was who he said he was. That's why he didn't stay. Uh, I mean, didn't get off the cross, but he did come out of the tomb. Amen. Amen. Yeah, he stayed on the cross, but he come out of the tomb. Amen. Amen. They don't recognize him, so they're not receiving him. And that's why they're not saved. It's just absolutely the way it is. Yeah. But their day's coming. They're going to see him again. Yeah. Hey, you hear me? If you're over, over in one of them nations over there, you're going to see him again. You know that man? It may be in our generation you've heard the story and the rumor and all about Jesus of Nazareth. Hey, you're going to see him again. I'm hoping that you respond to him. They rejected him the first time, but I'm hoping that don't happen this time. Some won't. I know that for a fact. And immediately take away the word that was sown in their hearts. There is a devil. And we do have a human spirit 
that for years has been soiled, unless you change, if you're saved, then you can enter into the things of God. But if you're not saved, you can't. Because the Bible said no thing, no, no man knows the things of man but the spirit of man. And what the effect of sin has come down through time. And neither does any man know the things of the Spirit of God except the Spirit of God. That's what we have to have. Him. What the title was today, have you received since you believed? Have you received this word of God, which will tell you, Jesus told them, said, go into Jerusalem. Well, he asked a, a group of people there one time, I think the Apostle Paul did, that have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, we ain't even heard it were the Holy Ghost. Right. He prayed for them and they heard about it then. Yeah. But listen, when you come to believe the Word of God, people have come to the altar. I'm, I'm just going to get descriptive. Got down and prayed, and you could see the effect of the Spirit of God on, on a lost person and lift them. And say, man, I don't know what that is. God help me. And then they'll, the Lord forgives them. And they get up and go. And they don't continue to get that seed. One of the first things to do, Christian, listen. If you've just been saved recently, get in the Word. Get in the Word. Get in the Word. I had a little electric heater here the other day that um, it got worth shutting off on me and my wife there at home. And we needed the thing to run. So what did I do? I got the manual down. The manual told me what to do about it, and that thing just running wide open. Folks, thank God this is the manual yeah, to man, eternal yeah. life. Hallelujah. Yeah, if you want to know what to do, where to do, and who to uh, call on, you can get it right here. Yes, sir. You can get it. It's available. It's open. But you have to want it. Those people that come to church, yeah, I've seen them, you've seen them. They'll come, they'll get down and pray, and the Spirit of God will touch them. And now, uh, whether they get saved or not, the Spirit of God, as I can remember years ago in my life, even on a school bus one day, I felt something. I didn't know it was the Spirit of God. But it was good, and I liked it. But then again, the day I got saved, I knew exactly what it was. People will come, and they'll pray. Why? Some people come. Now, some people in this world, and, and I don't mean this to sound wrong, nor condemn and they're criticizing. How many people will start to church or will try to get somebody to pray for me? It's because they've done something wrong and they've got caught. The Bible says that worldly sorrow worketh not under repentance. And are they people in prison that get saved? Sure they are. But not every one of them. The only time you will ever get saved is if you become sorry because you're not right with God. The reality, the Spirit of God, the presence of God will cause you to see and understand. Yeah. The reality of God, and when you see that, you'll understand He loves me. He's for me. He ain't against me. He wants to help me, not hurt me. And, and the Spirit of God can help us to repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Help me. And then when we get up from the altar and go forward, then the Spirit of God. Go to read. Go start reading. I was saved about, I don't know, about three weeks. No, it wasn't either. It was three days. I, I correct myself. I think it's about on a Tuesday or Wednesday, but then here comes Sunday. What does a Christian, I said, I got saved, and what does a Christian do? He go to church. I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. I said, Lord, I ain't a church man. I don't know what to do, God. And I did not know what to do. He said, read. Oh, my. 
gosh almighty, when I started reading, I started getting knowledge. See, just like I was talking more about that heater. I got knowledge out of there because the manufacturer put it there to tell me what to do if something's wrong. And the Word of God and the Holy Ghost of God let me know what I needed to do. And I, I went and done it. And here I am 44 years later, and thank God. Oh, he's still real. Hallelujah. He's still just as real to me oh, right now. Yeah, there have been some changes in my body health and certain on, circumstances. Man. But he is just as real now. I'm just yeah. as happy now. I'm on a chain now where I had full use back then. I'm just as happy now. No matter what comes your way, you be if he's in you, you'll be happy. He don't change. No, uh -uh. he helps you through the tough time. Not he don't lay down there with bless your heart. You be all right. Do the best you can. Uh uh. He'll say, stand up, be strong. I got you. I got you. Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. And they don't come back. And they don't get this in there, and they don't start following God's directions and guidance. You must. Anywhere where you go to work, they hire you for to make a salary so you can meet all your obligations. If you don't do what they tell you, they will not pay you. If you read the word and have an experience and you don't do what God says, he can't bless you. He can love you and you can feel the effect of that love. But he cannot bless you. When I say he cannot, well, he, he just won't. He'll show you mercy, grace. But if for actually blessing with himself, you won't get it until you, come on, Lord. Come on. Give me more, Lord. I want no more. That dirt. And the devil takes it away. What? Doubt and yourself. Why do you need I why do I need the Holy Ghost and the Word of God? Not to protect me from the devil or protect me from uh, people, critics that don't believe with enemies. I need it to protect me from myself. Because listen, until we get saved, we're we're, we're saturated in sin. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And sin will do. Why did Jesus tell them, uh, Pharisees, they said, oh, we're we the number one dudes. We, we seed Abraham. He said, you are your father, the devil, and his works will <laughs> yeah. you do. Folks, listen to me today. Right. You're not going to be a lost person and do the things of God. Right. You will not. Now, that don't mean that a human can't do a nice thing. Don't mean that they can't love their own. It don't mean that. It don't mean that they won't reach out to help. But as far as doing it in the sincerity and the spirit of God, you cannot live a Christian life without the Holy Ghost of God in you. And you cannot live a Christian life without the knowledge of the Word of God in you. You can not. And you won't. You won't. I needed the spirit at that time to protect me from my mind which was saturated in, in sin. That's what I know to do, and that's what I did. And I did it very good, too. Got myself in a mess. So therefore, I decided, hey, this feels so good, I'm going with it. And then, I can't explain this to you, and I don't know of anybody else that can. The moment that I became aware in my heart and mind, that the person of Jesus Christ was real. I can't explain it to you. I don't know if we can find words. But I thank God. He said, I'll reveal myself to my people. I just knew because of his presence that he was real. And, and that's the best I can explain it. Like, that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Uh, say, why did it rain? Uh, well, God said rain. He got it started. And that's why it still rains now. 
why there ain't no floods of the whole earth. He said, that wasn't going to happen in the morning. No. That's because that's the way God fixed it up. If we'll come to him and we'll make effort and allow his word to be in us and his spirit to draw us, then we'll know the truth. Jesus said there, told the Jews there one time, it's in John 8, 31. He said to them, he said, if you continue in my word, in my what? My word, the Bible as we know it now, if you continue in my word, you'll know the truth. And that very day, when I called upon Jesus, And he presented, I, again, I, I cannot, brother and sister, I can't find the words to say what happened to me and how I felt when he first introduced himself to me. Have I ever touched him on the side of the head or hugged him or anything? No. But have I felt his presence in me and felt the presence? Y'all know, we, we got feelings. They help guide us. The Spirit of God, we can feel it. See, that's how you feel God, the Spirit of God. I can't explain it. I just know that from that day forward, different things happened. And I had to make a decision, even to myself. More than once, that thought's come to me, well, you know, things a little trouble in this world. Won't you just, you used to have a good time and enjoy yourself. That was in this world. I said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh-uh. No, ain't happening. I have to have the Spirit of God and the Word of God to keep me in God's Word. My greatest enemy is not Satan, because I got the Word right here, and I know about that dude, but to keep me in line. Lovingly keep me in line. Not that God said, you better not do this, you better. Ain't God. But to guide me and give me knowledge and wisdom. The devil will come, and bottom line, people won't come back to church. They say too much trouble. They say it didn't work. Well, were you prepared with, uh, like the farmers out there, if they don't prepare the ground, which the Spirit and the Word will do for you to receive that new life, which is the seed coming up. If you don't receive that into you, then the seed's not going to bring forth. Why? It won't, because you, you look at these places where they plant, and then you go look at a place, and you'll see a strip down through there. There ain't nothing there. That seed didn't take place. Something about they overlooked that. And these are they, likewise, which were sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. I've seen people come to church and get to go, oh, they were happy. But they had no root in themselves and so endured, but for a time afterward, when affliction or persecution mm -hmm. arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Hmm. It ain't hard to offend nobody in this day and time. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. They hear it. Why do people back up? When you come to a point, you'll listen to me, folks. When you come to a point in your life where you begin to say, uh, well, me reading the Bible or me praying or we talking to the Lord, it's not, you know, I, gotta, I need to take a nap or I need to rest. And you get where you totally ignore that. You in trouble. You in trouble. You be swimming out through the water and you quit paddling and see what happens to you. Yeah. Uh, I've done. I've tried that before. It don't work. What happens? You go down. The Spirit of God is alive, and if you're going to be a Christian, He has to be alive in you. But if you don't do what is necessary, like when you go swimming, you better paddle. You better paddle. If you you say, "Well, I'm not going to paddle. I'm let God just keep me from drowning." You fit in the drown. You fit in the drown. Now, if you paddling all you can, doing the best you can do. And you still can't get through. God to reach down somehow or send somebody to you or get yep. you a rope or something. One old fella, he sent a whale to you. Yeah. 
That's another story like the brother said. And they have no root in themselves, but so endure. But for a time afterward, when afflictions or persecution arise, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. I'm not offended when people don't like me or trust me or say I don't believe it. I'm not offended. Why? Because the Holy Ghost that's in me will help me with that. I hear people say, well, uh, I, I can't forgive them. You don't know what they've done to me. Well, apparently, you don't know what Jesus done for you, or it wouldn't happen that way. Let me read on here. And the cures of their, this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things enter in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. I didn't say that the word said that. You got to have the word of God and the spirit in you, and you got to want saved to be saved. Because it's not a forced thing. You got to want to stay saved to stay saved. Folks, that's the way it is. So don't blame God if you end up being here to be casting out. Don't, don't blame God. Don't blame the preacher. Don't blame me. Don't blame nobody here. But please keep listening to the network. What the world needs is Jesus. Now, if you want to call, call Brother Ricky Phillips at 256 630 1262, Brother Larry Moss at 256 603 0641, Brother Kenneth Crane at 256 557 2858. And I'm Brother Harold O'Neill at 256-475-5854. Or if you want to email, what the world needs is Jesus. TV at gmail.com. God bless you. And don't forget about Jesus. God bless you till next time. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. Then things change and you're down in the valley. Oh, but don't lose faith for you're never alone. For the God on the mountain is to God in the valley. When things go wrong, He'll make them right. And the God of the good. God in the bad times, the God of the day is the God in the night. You talk of faith when we're up on the mountain, oh, but talk comes so easy. When life's at its best But down in the valley Of trials and temptations Well that's when faith is Really put to the test For the God on the mountain Is to God in the valley Things go wrong, he'll make them right. And the God of the good times is to God in the bad times. Cause the God of the day is to God in the night. Amen. I just want to say we appreciate you for watching today. I hope something was said, uh, maybe help you out in your daily walk with Jesus, amen, or help you out with your daily walk in the world, uh, uh, amen, that might change your mind from being lost to being saved, amen. Glory be to God. If you got a prayer request today, 
you can send a private message to facebook.com forward slash what the world needs is Jesus. You can call or text Brother Ricky Phillips, 256-630-1262, Brother Kenneth Crane at 256-557-2858, or Brother Harold O'Neill at 256-475-5854. You can also email us at what the world needs is Jesus TV at gmail.com. And like I say, we appreciate you today and we thank you for tuning in. Until our next broadcast, may God richly bless you. Amen. <music>